Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about the type 2 diabetes drug Farsiga. This overview might be helpful if you or someone you know takes this medication. I'll cover how it works, some contraindications and precautions of Farsiga, and the side effects you could experience. My name is Tyler and I'm a registered pharmacist with Pharmacy Update. And at the end of the video, I'll discuss a special FDA warning concerning this drug and other drugs in this class. So here we go. First off, what is it used for? Currently, the only FDA indication is the treatment of type 2 diabetes along with diet and exercise. However, Farsiga did recently receive a fast track designation from the FDA for an indication of reducing cardiovascular events, such as heart attacks. This designation does also include certain types of heart failure that they believe Farsiga can help with. And really they are getting this fast track designation because it is seen as a class-wide effect. Other drugs in this class of medication, uh, the SGLT2 inhibitors, have already received this indication for reductions of cardiovascular events. So I really wouldn't be surprised to see Farsiga included in this very soon. And this would be for diabetics that already have some sort of heart disease, whether it be a previous heart attack or heart failure like we mentioned. This drug class in general has been found to reduce mortality in these patients. And for this reason, they are many times considered a preferred add-on therapy for patients who take metformin and have established heart disease. How does Farsiga work exactly? So you've already heard me mention SGLT2 inhibitors. It's a drug class that is fairly new. It stands for sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor, uh, but you will normally just see it abbreviated as SGLT2 inhibitor. So how does this help lower blood sugar in type 2 diabetics? Well basically it helps you excrete more glucose through your urine. So in a normal situation, any glucose that is filtered through the kidneys is reabsorbed into the bloodstream. That's because glucose is a very important thing for your body. Uh, it can be used for energy, for your normal daily functions. It provides quite a bit of energy for your cells. So your body does not want to waste any glucose that it has. That's why if they find glucose in your urine, that usually means that your blood glucose is so high that your kidneys cannot keep up with all the excess glucose or you have some sort of urinary tract infection. But anyway, if you can block this reabsorption of glucose from your kidneys, you can excrete more from your urine, and doing this can effectively lower your blood glucose levels. This illustration here at the bottom uh, shows what would happen in a normal situation when glucose enters the kidneys. So as you can see, around 90% of glucose is reabsorbed at the proximal tubule of the kidney and this is done by the SGLT2 receptor and if you block that SGLT2 receptor less glucose will be reabsorbed and if it's not caught by the SGLT1 receptor or something else it will leave the body through the urinary tract. Now having more glucose travel through your urinary tract can cause some issues which we'll get into but this is the way that Farsiga can lower your blood sugar. Next, I will cover contraindications and precautions of Farsiga. First here is contraindications, uh, which means that you simply should not take this drug if you have one of these conditions. Uh, severe renal impairment or end-stage renal disease. So if your kidneys are not working properly, this drug really isn't going to work. Like we talked about, it performs its action in the kidneys. And if the kidneys aren't working properly, there really isn't any reason to take this drug. Also, around 75% of Farsiga is eliminated through the kidneys. So if you have renal disease, this can get increased drug levels in your bloodstream. So you could have more side effects, possibly. The manufacturer of Farsiga suggests not starting Farsiga in patients with a creatinine clearance of under 45 milliliters per minute and creatinine clearance is just a way of measuring kidney function. Also, patients on dialysis should not take this drug either. Now we'll move on to precautions. 
So one of the main problems with this drug, and really any SGLT2 inhibitor, is that it can cause an increase in genital and urinary tract infections. And this does make sense because we have more glucose traveling through the urinary tract, and any bacteria or fungus can use this glucose for energy. So if you have a long history of getting these types of infections, you may want to think twice before taking an SGLT2 inhibitor, including Farsiga. It can possibly cause hypotension or low blood pressure because it can make you urinate more often. There has been some reports of acute kidney injury, especially in people who are dehydrated. So while taking this medication, just make sure that you are keeping your fluids up if you get some severe diarrhea or vomiting, you may want to consider stopping this drug temporarily, but ultimately that is up to your doctor. Uh, also, it can possibly cause an increase in your LDL or bad cholesterol, so just make sure you keep an eye on that. And there has also been reports of ketoacidosis with Farsiga. Now we'll move on to side effects, and these mostly tie in with the precautions that we just discussed. So urinary tract infection is one of the most common side effects you can experience because of the reasons we talked about. And this is much more pronounced in women. Women are at a higher risk for UTIs compared to men in general. Um, so this can happen in up to 6% of patients. And I would guess that this percentage would be much higher if we were talking just about females. Um, also, those that are 75 years old and older are at an increased risk of getting this side effect as well. Genital infections are also possible, and this is primarily in women. Uh, nasopharyngitis is also listed as a possible side effect with around 7% of people getting this. And this is basically having symptoms that mirror a common cold, stuffy nose, and inflammation of the nasal cavities. And when I see this listed as a side effect for a medication, it makes me wonder if the drug is really causing this. So in the clinical trials, if you get nasopharyngitis, it is reported as a side effect. Now the question I have is, is it really the drug causing this, or are these people just getting a common cold? I'm not really sure to be honest, but it is listed as a side effect for Farsiga. You can also see an increase in urine output and nausea in a small percentage of people. Now, one nice thing about Farsiga is that hypoglycemia is not very common when it is used alone. If you are taking other diabetic medications, especially insulin, it can increase your risk of hypoglycemia, but not really by much just because of how the drug works. And that brings me to my final topic, a special warning from the FDA about SGLT2 inhibitors. So this was issued in August of last year. There have been reports of necrotizing fasciitis of the perineum region. This disease is more commonly known as flesh-eating bacteria. Uh, I believe this was first reported with Invokana, which was the first SGLT2 inhibitor released on the market. But yes, this is a very scary disease and it may make you think twice about trying um, a medication such as Farsiga. However, just remember that this is a very rare occurrence. It is not very likely that it's going to happen to you if you take one of these medications, but it is something that you just need to keep in the back of your mind. If you happen to develop any pain, tenderness, swelling, or redness in the area between or around your genitals and anus, Seek medical attention immediately so they can start treatment. Well, that's all I have for today, guys. I want to thank you for watching. If you'd like to keep up with the latest pharmacy and medical updates, please subscribe to my channel. I also do drug reviews such as this one. So thank you again, and have a great day.